Hey guys, Dan Fuld, Mr. Grey, Dandalf the Grey, and welcome to my extremely yellow house, apparently. But anyway, something a bit different this time. I'm gonna go over what I think is the paranormal scam. So for those who don't know, among this little community we are, the debunking community, and you know, I'm friends with paranormal investigators as well, full-blown believers, I'm known as the more skeptical person, probably the most skeptical person out of, out of all of us. And I'm always fully aware of, you know, if you go to a haunted place or whatever, the cost and how much money they make. So I thought I'd choose a few random famous haunted places and we're gonna find out how much money they actually make and whether the stories behind them are actually true. Before we get further, what qualifications do I have to do any of this? None, none whatsoever. But when I was born in the late seventies, I had the joy of life. I read many books. I was a full blown believer in the paranormal and ghosts until I became jaded in my older self. I love reading about Arthur Conan Doyle, Sherlock Holmes, Jules Verne. And when I got into the mid 90s, I read a few different things. But my reading criteria, which hasn't changed throughout the years and I've had since I was a little kid, is my fascination with the paranormal. From a very early age, I was told ghost stories from my family. My brother used to scare the shit out of me with various ghost stories. And I would read up on them. I would, any book I could get my hands on regarding the paranormal, paranormal investigations, Harry Price. I I basically studied the paranormal. When I was younger, I was a full-blown believer. And as I got older, uh, to my more jaded self I am today, I am a skeptic. An open skeptic, but I am a skeptic. I am in the firm belief that unless I see it, it's not true. That's just the way I am, okay? So I thought we'd go over the more famous hauntings, famous places and see what's what, see what the history of those places are and how much they cost to go there for one night. I think you'll be quite shocked. Well, the first one I want to cover is 30 East Drive. I've actually been there. I went there with the Ouija brothers. I had a very good night, didn't see anything. It was a cool place to be and people book that place daily to go there for the paranormal investigations. 30 East Drive is supposedly haunted by the Black Monk and a dude called Fred. There was a movie that came out in 2012, which is loosely based on a book by Colin Wilson, Poltergeist, A Study in Destructive Haunting. A lot of the movie was embellished, massively embellished by that book. And the movie is loosely based on the book from 1981, written by Colin Wilson. You can look that book up. Uh, he does document some of the stuff from the family in 1961 to 1965, I believe. The story of that house was only locally known to the people living around the house, but then it was sort of made a bit more popular by Colin Wilson in 1981 by writing that book. And then the film, When the Lights Came Out, came out in 2012. The director of that film, or the producer of that film, he actually bought the house and now he rents it out to paranormal investigators who want to go there and experience something try and find evidence of something, I don't know. But it is looked after by the next door neighbor, Carol. When I went there with the Ouija brothers, Carol wasn't there. So I didn't hear any knocks, weirdly. But for those who have gone there, they've said to experience something. I, I'm i in the firm belief that there is nothing there. So, you know, who am I to say? What I did find out when I was when I went there with the Ouija brothers, I asked, I asked them many things. I, I didn't interview them. I asked them many things about the process. And I also asked how much it cost. Now they did say, if, but you can go to the website and find out exactly how much it costs per night for a group of up to four people to go there for a panel investigation. So I did some calculations. They weren't hard calculations. For one night, now, now bear in mind from, from, from every, every source I can see and everyone I've asked, 30 East Drive is pretty much booked seven days a week throughout the year. Obviously you're gonna have some days off for Christmas, you know, some bank holidays maybe. So I won't be counting the 365 days, but I'm gonna count 360 days as the per night of panel investigations. So for one night, it costs 300 pound up to four people. I'm not counting weekends. You know, we'll give them the benefit of the doubt for not counting weekends. That comes to 72,000 pounds per year. That is a ton of money. That is a lot of money for something which has never been proven to be anything other than an old 1970s house. On weekends and bank holidays, it costs 400 for a group of up to four people. Only up to four people, by the way. Anything above that, you pay more. Now, the only story which has ever been confirmed there, obviously some of the family members who lived there, but also some psychic mediums who've gone there. But apart from that, Nothing has ever been confirmed of a black monk in that area. It's all pretty much hearsay. So 
they're making £72,000 per year, per year, on the house. Now, I get it. If you have a house like that, you have to maintain it. I understand that. But 300 quid a night, come on now. It's a lot of money to go there in the hopes that you might hear a knock, which is probably from next door. I'm just saying. Now, the next one is The Conjuring House. Now, the, the film which came out in 2011, or was it 2012? I can't remember. That's one of my favourite horror f- movies of all time, The Conjuring House. I absolutely love that movie. I think it tells a really good story. It, I think it does horror in the best way possible when it comes to a movie. But the real story is slightly different, as they always are. You know, you know movies are always going to embellish the stories when it comes to these haunted happenings. I understand that. You know, you don't want... A movie of someone just standing in the room for eight hours calling out to thin air. You just don't want that, do you? So I understand that movies tend to embellish the stories that come from the real, supposedly real haunted happenings. But the real house was supposedly haunted by the rumoured Satanist Bathsheba, who apparently did exist in the mid-1800s and supposedly was responsible for the death of the neighbour's child, although no trial was ever given. The Perron family bought the house in 1971 and lived there until 1980. In the years living there, they experienced possessions, spirits roaming the house, the smell of rotten flesh and beds would rise. Even though the film depicted the Warrens saving the Perrin family with an exorcism, this didn't actually happen. The father, Roger, kicked the Warrens out because he was worried for his wife's mental stability. Don't know why. I don't know if, if he thought they were scamming them or not. I don't know. Once the Perrin family moved out in the 1980s, no other haunting has ever happened in the house unless paranormal investigators go there. And obviously, it's, it's run now by... I think it's a couple or a company, I can't remember. And you can pay to go there to do your own paranormal investigation. You have the likes of Sam and Colby, Twin Paranormal. All the other top YouTube YouTube paranormal investigators have gone to the Conjuring House. For one night from Sunday to Thursday, it costs you, if you want to go there as a paranormal investigator, it will cost you $960. Per night. In real money, that's £752 per night. If you want to go there on the weekend, it costs $1,260. Again, in real money, £987. And for additional people, $160 per person. So overall, throughout the year, on average, it makes $230,000. $230,000. Almost a quarter of a million dollars per year. That's going on if you had a panel investigators there throughout the throughout the year, every day, every week. Which I'm assuming they do because it's a pretty popular place. That is on average. So, you know, don't take my uh, my word on that price as gospel. That is close to what it, they make per year. So you can understand a supposedly haunted place, you know, th- they are making a lot of money on what they do. So you can understand when people go there, there's an incentive to have these haunted happenings happen on camera on cue for some shouty YouTuber. Oh, and that's just The Conjuring House. The Conjuring House so far is the most expensive place to go if you want to do a paranormal investigation. Imagine you go there and nothing happens, which I assume happens for a lot of like real paranormal investigators who genuinely go out to f- try and find something of the unknown. I feel bad for them having to pay that amount and nothing happening. Yet obviously you get the reason they can charge that much is obviously the history from the the original family. And when you get jumped up fake YouTubers going there and jumping and screaming at every little tiny knock and EVP and saying, oh my God, I nearly died. That's how they can charge that much. Interesting. Next one is the Saley House. The, the Saley House, I've only ever seen one video on it and it was... I believe it was Ghost Adventures a couple of years back. I think it was. Or was it um, Ryan Bagar and Shane Maday? I think they, yes. That's actually, yes, they've been there. And the torch switched on. I, I like those two. I think they, they have a lot of fun with what they do. I don't think they've ever seen anything. But I do like... Uh, I do like their versions of panel investigations. They keep it real, people. Which, which you should all do. Commissioned by Charles Finney in the mid-1800s, the Saley House was mainly used for surgery and examination of patients. 
In the 1990s, the Pickman family bought the house and almost immediately started reporting paranormal happenings, mainly of the ghost of a girl from the mid-1800s who died during an appendicitis operation. Now, the, the story of the girl supposedly haunting the Saley house who died during an operation of appendicitis. There's no actual facts of that girl ever dying or of a girl of that name being there during that operation. There's no actual facts of that actually happening. Now, in surgeries, I've no doubt it's a possibility someone could have died on the operating table. You know, that, that happens unfortunately with surgeries. But that particular story of the girl actually dying there with appendicitis has never been shown to be true. The only way those facts, I say, I, I use the term facts loosely, the only way those facts has ever been corroborated by mediums and psychics who have been there. Oh, and there's a portal to hell there as well, apparently. Which hell? I don't know. Is it the ancient Egyptian Duat? Is it the Greek hell of Hades? Or is it the usual Christian hell of burning for eternity? I, I don't know which hell is supposed to be. I don't know. I'm assuming it's the Christian one. Throughout the year, it costs $125 per person to have a panel investigation in the Sealy House. In, again, in real money, that's £97. In the haunting season, which is obviously closer to Halloween, it's $150 per person. So overall, count it on, because it's only a minimum of two people that can go to the Saley House. You can't go there for one person, which I think it'd be better if it was one person, to be honest with you. But going on a minimum of two people, and let's just say we use the, the only through the weekdays, they make £60,000 per year on paranormal investigations alone. You can do other tours, but paranormal investigations alone, £60,000. $60,000, I should say. A lot of money. It's not as high as the Conjuring House or anything like that, but it's still a high number. I have a feeling my the house I live in right now is really haunted. That's what I'm going to tell people. I can quit my job. Now, the next one is Bobby Mackey's. Now, I, I first saw this through Zach Bagans and Ghost Adventures. I used to watch Ghost Adventures quite a lot. I, I never thought any of it was real, but I did enjoy watching it, but then it got a bit too stupid. Zach Bagans would get possessed every bloody day. He'd attack Aaron all the bloody time. That's the way it went. It was originally a slaughterhouse and then turned into a musical venue. It was said to be haunted by the ghost of a woman whose body was found in a field two and a half miles away. Why the ghost whose body was found in a field a couple of miles away would haunt a musical venue, I don't know. I, I'll never understand that. There's also the legend of Joanna. If you go, if you watch any video on YouTube about Bobby Mackey's, there's, they always pick up on a girl called Joanna who was apparently was a dancer in Bobby Mackey's in the 1940s. And she was having an affair or something. And, her, and she ended her life because her father murdered her partner at the time. Don't know why. But that story always pops up whenever panel investigators go there. But again, there are no actual facts of this person Joanna actually existing in that place. They found like the name Joanna on like a birth certificate in and around the area but the Johanna they've never found any facts of that. The only real part of the Bobby Mackeys is the woman that they found in the field her name was Pearl Bryan but again they've never found any connection to Bobby Mackeys with this Pearl Bryan because her body was found a few miles away and somehow she haunts the, the musical place. I don't know. I don't understand that. Bobby Mackey's is up for demolition within the next couple of months, apparently. So, you know, all the prices I'm about to give you is probably not up to, to date, but this is what I found. From Sunday to Thursday, up to a group of five people, it costs six hundred and fifty dollars per night, or five hundred and nine pounds. From Friday to Saturday, up to five people, it costs seven hundred and fifty dollars, or five hundred and eighty-seven pounds. So throughout the year, it makes on average one hundred and fifty-six thousand dollars. It's, it's no wonder everywhere is a haunted house with stories that nobody can corroborate the facts. It amazes me. Amityville. Now, I'm adding this for a reason. For those who don't know, in 1974, Ronald DeVeo Jr. woke up one night and went around his family home and murdered his father, mother, his two brothers, and his two sisters with a .35 Marlin rifle. This all happened in 1974, in November. 
apparently it was it happened at 3 a.m this is going on the the coroner's reports you know when he examined the bodies he, he determined that the time of death was around about 3 a.m it wasn't exactly 3 a.m but it was around about 3 a.m he had first tried to play it off as somebody didn't know who had murdered his family he was taken to the police station for questioning but due to inconsistencies in his interrogation they found out that his stories didn't add up and he eventually confessed to the murders. In his court case, his defense tried to plead insanity, which was ba also backed up by a psychiatrist. The prosecution convicted him anyway because he had a known history of heavy heroin and LSD use. You know, maybe that's where the voices came from, who knows? But still, it's a tragic, bloody incident. He was convicted and sent to prison for 25 years to life. Some questions were raised around the murders on why there was no struggle from his mother, father and brothers and sisters as they surely would have heard the gunshots. In interrogation, Defoe apparently had, he admitted to drugging them before they went to sleep, which is why there was no struggle when the gunshots were happening. He died in prison in 2021. A few months later, the Lutz family moved in. George Lutz. This is where the Amityville horror begins, basically. I mean, don't forget, the, the stuff in the... the, the you know, with the DeFeo family, that's a horror in itself. But the paranormal horror starts when the Lutz family moved in. And they only lived there for 28 days. They had things like weird odours, rotten flesh, green ooze oozing down the walls. And a priest was apparently told to get out by some unknown ghostly entity. But it turns out, it was all bollocks. A friend of the family who had a bit of a falling out after the fact with the Lutz family uh, confessed that the Lutz family, all not all, but like George Lutz and his wife came up with the story of the haunting during a couple of uh, bottles of bubbly and they made the whole thing up. None of this was ever confirmed as fact by anyone who lived in our house. There's been five families who lived in the Amityville house since the Lutz family moved out. And there's one who still lives there today and not once has any of those families ever seen a haunting, happening, paranormal incident. They don't want anyone going to their house. They don't put this house up as a paranormal house. They despise people going there to take photos. They don't want no public acknowledgement of the house. They even as far as to go as change addresses all the time. So it's weird how the one family who were at the time, the Lutz family, were a bit of financial difficulty and they needed a bit of cash, came up with a story. They bought this house, came up with a story of a paranormal incident and tried to make a quick buck. There was movies made about it, there's books made about it. I think George Lutz probably made a bit of money from the books and the movies, the earlier ones, not the later ones. The reason I add that, you know, cause that's one of the most supposedly haunted places in the world, which doesn't charge anyone doesn't want anyone going there and has never had a haunting ever since that one 28 day period when the Lutz family was in there. I think that's that's telling for me of how 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 big a scope the Amityville, when you mention anyone, oh, they've seen the Amityville horror, they go, oh my God, yeah, I scared the crap out of me. I scared the crap out of me as a kid. Don't, think, don't, don't get me wrong. I scared the crap out of me as a kid. But when you get older and jaded, <laughs> you realize how much bollocks it is. And the final one for this video, I'll go over more in a later date. There are a lot more places which you know, obviously charge more money and charge money per person per night for panel investigations, make a lot of money, is the Goldfield Hotel. Again, I first saw this is on Zach, I think the Ghost Adventures when they first started out, I think it was either mid 2000 or late 2000, I can't remember now. But that's the first time I ever saw the Goldfield Hotel. It was built during the gold rush of the early 1900s in and around Goldfield. It was known for its high class design, its high tech luxuries of the time, as in each room having its own telephone, central heating and electric lights. It's supposedly haunted by a spirit of a woman called Elizabeth, who was apparently changed to the radiator in room 109 by her husband because she was pregnant and he didn't want anyone to know or something. That is an actual real event. But like I said, I remember seeing that on Ghost Adventures and Zach Bagans got possessed and tried to attack Aaron, or Aaron. I don't know how you say it in America. <laughs> like he always bloody does in every episode. He always gets possessed. This is part of the reason why I stopped watching. He gets possessed in everything. And I couldn't find an exact up-to-date pricing for Goldfield Hotel. I can only go on like what I see on YouTube for how many people go there per week, per year, whatever. So I'm just gonna average it out. So we'll just say, for example, two days a week, 
right? We'll count as a panel investigation team goes there two days a week throughout the year. So there's a flat fee of four hundred dollars. It's not counting the amount of people who are in this group. That's just a flat fee. If you want, if you're one person. 10 people, it's $400 straight up. And then 10 person per night. So it's $400 and $10 per person. So you have five people, that's $450. See, I can do maths. So going on the two day a week, every week per year, that's an average of $38,000 that Goldfield Hotel makes. Now again, I understand you have to maintain certain buildings. I'm assuming that, you know it's a listed building. Do they have listed buildings in America? I think they do. It just goes to show how much money is in the paranormal. And I think, I think the majority of it is an absolute scam. The people who own these buildings know the full, know that nothing happens. They obviously, they have an incentive to, when paranormal investigators go to these places to give them this, the, the guided tour, so to speak, and say, oh yes, this woman's supposed to be here at night at 3 a.m. If you go in this room at 2 a.m., you might see Fred. I'm not talking about, I'm just talking in general now, but it's interesting how much money is involved in the paranormal, and it's only kicked off over the last, say, 15 years. Well, about 20 years, actually. 20 years since the likes of Most Haunted, Taps, Ghost Hunters. YouTube, when that kicked in, that's when it skyrocketed, and it makes a hell of a lot of money. And pretty much any of these buildings you can go to you can look into the actual facts of the history and most of the time the facts are completely untrue and they're only corroborated by psychics and mediums which you can unfortunately you cannot take them as gospel i just thought i'd point out some stuff you know when you go to these places bear in mind of the incentive to have something happen there the incentive to have famous people go to these places to promote these places just bear in mind that it's pretty much a money-making scheme. And when you look into the actual facts of these places, they're mostly untrue. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed. Leave a like if you like this video. Leave a sub if you're new to my channel. I do this quite often. That's it. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.